Hey everybody, welcome into Rock Painting 101 where we give you fun new rock painting ideas that anybody can create. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you do, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Let's get painting. So it's been a while since we've done dangles. Those who have followed the page, um, we've had the page for like four years now. So those of you that have followed a long time, I used to do dangles all the time. I love to do them. They're so whimsical and fun and forgiving. I do use paint pens for them 90% of the time. I have done them a few times um, with acrylic paints um, and dotting tools, only using, I did one with brushes all the way, but um, if you have an extra fine tip black for your lining, you can fill in your dangles using dotting tools um i've shown those off before i've got some of them back here something like this you can fill in these dots with or toothpicks and things along those lines if you have a nice set of um, extra fine tip paint pens they are perfect for this um, these are all from the artistro pack i think there's like 42 colors in it when you get those i'm just going to work with some basic colors today um, these are very flexible as far as colors and styles I'm gonna do a spring themed one today with flowers. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. I see there's a handful of you guys in here. If you uh, feel comfortable saying where you're watching from, you can let us know where you're watching from to see how far we stretch. The main thing with dangles is things dangle, right? So we have to give ourselves a place for them to come from, okay? So along the top of my rock, I'm gonna create a shape here we're gonna start all the way at the left hand side with a circle we're gonna come up way up along the top because we're gonna frame our whole rock and then come to the right hand side and then I'm just gonna do a couple dots here off to the side okay now I'm gonna add a secondary line here just so that we can add some more fun details I'm gonna go there maybe about there you do not have to follow this design to a T. I'm just showing you some different things you can do to make it an interesting looking rock. Now, as I'm working along here, you're gonna say this looks super boring, but if you've never seen one of these before, but once we start adding in colors, these are really fun and whimsical. So um, in between here, anywhere you want, you can create circles. Do it right over your black line. Your colors will lay over that just fine. We can add some lines in here to break up these shapes. We'll come back in and fill with color. Now, just like I said, the name of it is dangles. So what we're gonna start doing now is creating these dangles that come down from, this is basically our curtain rod, I guess you could say. <laughs> so we're gonna create a lines that come straight down and I'm gonna do flowers at the ends of a lot of my dangles. So we're gonna come way down at the bottom of each dangle, I always have something like it's weighing it down. So we're going to do a flower right here. Now I'm using a very light touch with my black because this is one of the bumpier stones. I know I use a lot of smooth stones, but not everybody has smooth stones. So the key to this is to go really nice and light with your paint pen so you don't splatter because these are kind of like a little bit of like a plastic nib to them. And so they can splatter, okay? So you gotta be careful. Um, obviously, if it splatters in the center, you get lucky, you're gonna cover that anyways. Now, on the dangle coming down, we're gonna add some of these little circles. And we'll even do one up here at the top, okay? And we're gonna add some more of these just all over the place. You can start with your flower first if you want to. Um, There's not really any rules. My favorite kind of rock, right? I'm gonna have it dangle down here. But I'm so in the spring mood. If you guys follow the page closely, you know um, I shared, I have the prettiest tree in my front yard right now. It's where I put my little kindness rock sign. If you didn't see that video, when we're done here, or if you wanna flip out and come back, it is probably the prettiest blooming tree I've ever seen and it's really cool because it's really low to the ground like it kind of hangs over the sidewalk I had to trim it a little bit it's almost like you have to walk under this beautiful blooming tree it's stunning 
lots of whites. The, the pods of the flowers are like this dark magenta, but then the flowers blooming from it are more of a pink, or light pink, like pale pink and white. Okay. Oop, I'm drifting. See, that's why I keep my iPad up here. Okay, we'll do one more big flower here, and then we're gonna start filling in. Now I have done these where I've done letters on the strings or the dangles. Everywhere where there's a circle is going to have color. So you want lots of these little dots and, and circles. The thing is you can always add more to them as well. You can even make these tiny little flowers. Maybe you have two little ones hanging over here. Maybe off the bottom of the flower, you just have a couple little dangles. You can have little short ones just filling in space. Like I said, there's really no rules. You can have things connect like this flower. All right, so we're gonna start with this so you guys can see how it looks when we start to fill in. Now I've got pink, blue, green, and yellow are the colors that I have here. I don't know if I'm gonna use all of them, some of them. Um, just whatever starts going down. <laughs> so we're gonna start filling in our shapes. And this is why I was saying these are forgiving because um, if you mess up on your circle, as long as the outer edge of whatever shape you want is going to be what you'll see. So like this flower right here is driving me crazy already. So we're gonna kind of change the shape of those two petals a little bit. Because that's kind of not the shape I like. So we're gonna kind of fix that before we fill it in. Sometimes when I'm drawing these live, my rock is a lot further away from my face than I usually would have it if I was actually drawing. Okay, that's better. We'll just color that one in last. Always make sure you put your caps on your pens. Don't leave them with the pens open. That can really dry out the tip. All right, we're gonna start with some pink here. So we're gonna fill in our flowers, I want my flower petals to be pink. Like I said, I got that pink flowering tree. But you're gonna see just how cheery this rock gets really fast when you start adding in the color. And this is why I said, if you don't have the paint pens and you need to do this with acrylic paint, you can easily fill in these shapes with dotting tools, or like I said, you can even just use little toothpicks um, with your acrylic paints to fill them in. I have done full dangles without paint pens in the past before. The paint pens just definitely make it a bit easier. Okay, see how that little flower, just one flower colored in, does all the difference. I think I'm gonna do pink. Mm, I don't know if I want a white flower or not was thinking about it. Maybe I'll do this one white, maybe two big ones. I'll play around a bit. Maybe this one over here, pink for sure. I did leave a little center there. You can hear all the yard work being done outside. We've had a lot of rain. It's a nice day today. Everybody's trying to get some work done, it sounds like. I'm gonna do white white, white, and pink. Now I'm gonna give that another second because I did do that second coat of black on there. So I'm gonna wait on that. I don't wanna have that pull any color in. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the centers of my flowers with this nice bright yellow. Extra careful there, I don't wanna accidentally get pink in my yellow. And again, same thing, if you're um, scraping a lot, then A, your paint pen might not be uh, a huge spider. What did that just say? I don't know 
what she just said. I missed that. Something about a spider. I don't see one around me. <laughs> that just startled me. Um, if your paint's not flowing out, if you have to press really hard to get your paint flowing, give it a good shake, give it a new pulse. You wanna be able to lay the paint down. Um, if you're doing a big space with some colors, like yellow tends to be a little bit more transparent than some others, like the pink goes on pretty thick. Um, you might have to come back and do a second coat, which is totally fine. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and lay this down. Did anybody else see that comment go by that there's something about a spider? What? On one of my big dangles. Outside, okay. <laughs> For a second I thought she saw something like on my desk. It's that time of year to get in the house. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for clarifying. <laughs> I'll have to make sure that I put a little disclaimer when I upload this on YouTube that somebody mentioned a spider. I sound like I'm talking to myself sometimes on YouTube. All right, so on these, I really want to do some green in the dangle parts coming down almost as they're like little vines connecting to the flowers. And I really just bounce around between my colors when I'm filling in. Um, yes, living in the woods. You probably do get used to the spiders. I don't know that I would. Uh, I love to be outside, and that's just one thing that I can't. I don't completely panic, but I definitely don't hang around and see if they want to be friends. <laughs> But I love to be outside. I love to garden. And so I wish I could be a little more calm around the, the spiders and bugs. But I usually just give them their space. I know they have a purpose. I let them be. I'm going to leave a couple of these open. I think I'm going to do some white up here at the top. Kind of like the clouds would have white. And a couple of some rainy days. Little blues and the dangles dripping down. Let's go back in with our pink on this big flower. I really want to add that. Now, also, another tip. Do not, you see how I'm not going straight tip into, I'm always trying to work slightly at an angle on the side. That also will help you be more intentional about where you're placing your paint. So let me see if I can get even closer here on the side. So like if I'm trying to get right up against this line here, uh, focused, okay. So I'm using kind of the side of my paint pen to get right up next to that line, okay. I'm not going like this. A, that can splatter, and B, you'll wear down the tips of your pen just faster. Well, like I said, that's gonna happen um, when you're using paint pens on rocks over time, it's just inevitable. I mean, you're literally rubbing a piece of plastic on rock. It's going to wear down, but you can prolong the life of them by being gentle. And remember, the paint wants to go on the rock, but I always try to remind people you don't have to push really hard. If it's not coming out and going onto the rock, you need to give it another shake and another pulse on your paper, okay? So I always have paper when I'm working. If you looked around almost anywhere in my house, you'll see a piece of paper with little paint pen doodles on it because I'm always doodling, even when it's not on rocks. I'm always thinking of little ideas. Look how cute this is turning out, you guys. I'm really excited about it. I know this is a little bit longer of a live, sure you can kind of get the, the gist of it and like all my other tutorials if you don't have time to stick around right now this will eventually be over on YouTube maybe make a quick little reel out of it to share on the page too but I'd rather take my time and have it turn out really cute than rush taking me almost four years to do that, not feel the pressure of being live and rushing. 
This is also a lot of really up close, slow movements, fine details. So when you're calling this in, if you need to take a break and walk away and come back, that's okay. <laughs> like you don't have to push yourself to do it all in one sitting. Your hand can get a little bit tired from gripping the uh, paint pens or the dotting tools, whatever you're using. So feel, you know, set it down, take a break, come back. Let's go in with some white here. It's the only one I always have to doodle on top of a color to make sure that it's flowing because you can't see it on the white page. So I'm gonna do, let's see, make sure I'm still in. This one white. That white really does pop. It might make take two coats, but. You ever make a decision when you're rock painting and you're like, oh, I hope this looks good and you're pleasantly surprised. I like that bright white. These make great name rocks too. You can start with the name along the top of the rock and create these dangles coming off of it um, a long time ago. <laughs> We're talking probably three or four years back maybe now. We did one that said spring. It was so cute. Yep, you just use the word and that's what you dangle everything off of. You, you place your letters and dangle all these things down or you can sneak the letters into the dangles. So like on each one of these dangles, it can have a letter that's surrounded by some of your stuff. Um, you can put anything on these. We've done suns, you can do hearts. Um, so really, the whole idea of these is limitless what you can use this kind of design for. Here. Trying not to put my finger down on any of my wet paint. Maybe one of the hardest parts of these because they're bouncing around so much. Yeah, we'll definitely have to go and do a second coat on that white, but I really like the white on there. Now in these little spots, like if I'm gonna do a little dot too, um, a lot of times what I'm doing, I, I am using the tip, but I'm just dotting it. So if you dot once, you get a tiny dot, you can dot in the exact same spot again, it makes it just a little bit bigger. I did smudge my blue over here. Let me re-outline that really quick so I can go back in with my blue again. Oh, and I got my white over here, my goodness, I'm not paying attention. We'll fix it. We'll get to come back in here. Fix that. I just smudged that. I'm not gonna be able to get all that off. Let to come back in. Mistakes happen. Not a big deal. I was showing you guys. Sometimes you can come in with like an X-Acto knife and like scratch it, but I feel like that noise might be like awful to do live. So if this is bad, I'm gonna not do it now. Yeah, I'm not doing that now. You can come back in with like an X-Acto knife or like a fingernail file on the tip and you can kind of scratch the surface of the rock and your paint's gonna come right off. But I'm not gonna do that right in your guys' ear because that's a noise that could really not be pleasant, <laughs> especially right next to the speaker. So we're gonna let that dry. We'll come back in and fix that flower in a little bit, but let's add in a couple more white dots up here. So even in this area, you can kind of wiggle in the center. This one's a little bigger. That will also kind of stack that paint a little bit too. Kind of wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Okay. So once you've kind of gone through all of your colors once, that's when you can kind of look at it and say, all right, do I want more dangles anywhere? What color am I lacking? What color do I want more of? I kind of like the idea of having some dots of these pinks, like along some of them, like they're like little flower buds maybe that didn't bloom yet. This one needs something up here. 
I'm gonna add two more. We're gonna do those pink, maybe that one pink. So I'm just gonna continue filling these in until everything, I'm not gonna do those first, obviously, because they are wet. But we'll come down here, we'll add some pink here. Do this one up here. Maybe this one, maybe a couple little pinks over here. And then you can also fill in like these areas where you made these stripes along the area. Like I want some pink up here in the top just to kind of balance it out. So we're gonna fill in this one pink. And this one over here pink. I feel like we might need some yellow up there as well. So I will do the, the other little spaces with some yellow. And then we'll fill in those last ones. We'll go back over that white really quick too. And the center of this one needs to be a little bit more. Now again, when you're going on a second coat, you're dabbing on top. Don't scrape up that paint that you already laid down. So let's do, I almost feel like we could get away with this triangle shape. Nice little burst of yellow up here at the top. Okay, let's get this little area here. So just as you're finishing up, that's all you gotta do. You just kind of, by looking at it, decide how you want those last bits of colors to be spread out. Oh man, that was maybe covering up a little bit what I was doing there. Uh, just so you get a pretty balance with your color. Let's do... I don't know, I think I'm maybe pink and then green. And we're wrapping up, you guys. You can come back in. Um, when I'm done with these, I don't know if I've got a microphone. These are for like super fine details. Like, so if I just needed to touch up like around the edge of one of my dangles, I would use this. Um, you want to be extra careful with these on bumpy rocks. These are expensive and when they wear down, they're done for. So, but they have this super, super tiny tip. So see, you can get these really fine lines. Um, so when I'm done, sometimes I'll go in and just kind of crisp up the outer edge of like a circle. Um, because if you try to go back in, see like, look what's, see what happens when you try to go back in with your, um, extra fine tip it's not going to get because you're kind of covering some of it when you're filling in right so it's kind of hard to keep that thin outline see I'm going back over that outline a little bit we have those in our Amazon shop as well so that they come in a pack with a lot of different sizes in them they're all tiny sizes. I, the biggest size is equivalent to like this extra fine tip paint pens size. I believe that's the biggest one they have. Uh, they get real tiny, but you wanna be super careful. And you also wanna doodle the tips of those off right away on a piece of paper because you can't let dust dry in them it will literally dry out the tip of them. Like these, if you get dust in them, you can rinse them out. You just pull these out and rinse them out. Okay, I think we're done. I will show you one spot on here. I'm trying to think of what I painted a while. Oh, I got one little dot over here. Ooh, I think I want that one pink. Um, let me find one dot here and I'll give you an example. I need to do those white petals one more time. Um, but I'll, I'll give you an example of using that. I'll do these blue dots here real close for you so you can see how that can really give it a nice finish at the end. Especially if you're if you're making this as a gift for somebody. If you're just going to hide it outside, somebody's going to be real excited to find something cute like this. You don't have to be super hard on yourself with your edges and stuff. I think that that's just 
unnecessary. Fight the perfectionist sometimes. Just enjoy the painting process. Okay. So like this blue dot, see how it, the bottom part of the dot, you can't really see it very well right there. So I'm gonna take, it's funny, I doodle on my finger all the time with these. I'm gonna come right in here and just do the bottom of the dot. Oh, it's still a little bit wet. See, I can just kinda just to kind of redefine the bottom of that dot. So you can come back through with something like this if you really, really want to, but let it sit. Um, I just wanted to show you. I, I'll let this dry completely before I come back through and start um, doing anything like that, if I even am going to. But how cute is this? I hope you guys try one of these because they're so fun and that's so pretty and whimsical. I'm excited to hang this one out in probably put this one out in my tree so if you join in live today thanks for joining in live I really appreciate it I was not watching comments very well today except for that spider one that caught me off guard um, so if you did have any questions I will come back through um, as soon as this uploads to the page and answer any questions you may have had all the supplies that I use today are in the link that are in the description for the post in our Amazon supply shop all of these pens were all from the same um, big artistro pack and if they have smaller ones, they, all these colors would probably be in a smaller one too because they're all really basic colors. Um, and then these micron pens, I have those listed as well. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I'll be back soon with something else fun and live for you. Um, if you're not yet, make sure you're following the page so you catch us when we go live next time. Bye-bye.